not afraid to let go uh. You decide if you're ever gonna let me know Yeah, suicide if you ever try to let go uh. I'm sad and know, yeah I'm sad and know, yeah Who am I? Someone not afraid to let go uh. You decide if you're ever gonna let me know Hey guys, I cannot tell you how excited I am for God of War. And here we're watching the God of War review from IGN. Now, it's crazy because God of War let their embargo come early. And you know how that is. Most game developers do not want the embargo to be up until like a couple days before or even a day after it comes out, it's released. So for them to let the reviews go up almost what's today i think today's the 12th dude that's like bro that's crazy that's like seven days before it drops or eight days before that that's crazy bro the sony must be really confident in this game god of war is a non-stop whirlwind of emotions and bloody action this game is a masterful composition of exceptional interlocking parts. And over the course of 25 hours, its design pays off in unexpected ways in both the gameplay and the fish out of Greek water story. And it's all framed by one continuous camera shot that never cuts away or takes the focus off the heart of it all. The relationship between a thoughtfully reimagined Kratos and his young son. Wow. Never been this close to the mountain before. A new epic. Looks so okay. Big. The dichotomy between Kratos and Atreus plays Can out... Can we talk about how beautiful this game looks? It's insane. ...stirring and very human moments throughout the story as the pair mourns the loss of their wife and mother and sets out on a quest to fulfill her final wishes. Young boy. I was surprised by how often I saw myself in both of their well-worn shoes. I can't quite remember a father-son dynamic so successfully developed and used to ground a fantastical adventure. This depth and complexity transforms Kratos from the previous God of War games as flat embodiment of the bloodthirsty warrior cliché. That's true, because he really was. Like, he was just a bloodthirsty warrior with no real depth. It's just the fact that he could spectacularly carry out his vengeance is what made those last three games good you know seeing him getting revenge and understanding his motive for that revenge was which was fairly simple the god Ares made him kill his his own family um th that dynamic alone was enough to save that series because the other characters were somewhat fleshed out and his him carrying out that revenge was so entertaining to see now that he is not that character anymore, it, this is going to be a great God of War because he's more developed as I've seen from other reviews and other people who have played the game early. I wish I could play the game early. I would review it and I would, you know, give you guys an honest opinion. You know, I, I'm pretty good at looking at video games and just being able to understand what makes a game great because like it or not people say oh the old god of wars were born they it was a lot of moving parts together that made those games so good for what they were at that time um and arguably you could say god of war 3 was more fleshed out in terms of story but the other two kind of fell flat i got to War one and two I, I say two is a little better than three just a little bit but three overall was more epic in scale and the story was not as subpar as God of War 1 or 2. So it it's kind of hard to 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 balance it out because those games were solely a revenge story. People have to understand that it was a revenge, a bloody one too. I don't know if you guys played those three, but oh my goodness, when he said he was going to kill all the gods, he was serious. Now, I don't know if he's still as brutal in this new game, but I do know he's more human. And he has a son now. He has a new wife. You know, he has a new family. It's cool. To an internally conflicted father who can stand shoulder to shoulder with my favorite protagonists in recent media, Christopher Judge turns in a fantastic performance as Kratos with his booming voice. Slow down. Your haste will cost us. And Sonny Sulich does just as well as Atreus. Can I have my bow back now? And they're bolstered even more by a wonderful ensemble cast, including one of my favorite supporting characters in a game in years. 
The main villain and many of the supporting characters are complex in their motivations too. While I would have liked to see a few more scenes featuring the main antagonist, the moments involving the entire ensemble are not only captivating, but often intriguingly mirror the story of Kratos and Atreus. The intimacy of the story is strengthened by God of War's single-shot camera style, which, unless you die, never cuts once, from title screen to ending credits. It enhances the sense of scale when fighting huge enemies, but more importantly, it made me feel closer to Kratos. At the most tense and heartbreaking points, the camera forces you to sit with him through every second of it. The relationship between father and son is smartly woven into battle, in that Atreus doesn't require a babysitter. Instead, he's a nearly invulnerable ally who fires arrows at your enemies on command and can be upgraded to do even more. Should I fire? And fear not, there are thrilling battles of plenty that carry forward the blood-soaked traditions of the series. Okay. Kratos' signature weapon this time out is the Leviathan Axe, which is one of the best weapons I've used in any recent game. Its best trick is that it acts just like Thor's hammer Mjolnir, as depicted in the Marvel movies. Thanks to a great sound and subtle vibration, the feel of throwing and recalling the Leviathan just it looks, so... The, the gameplay and the, the combat looks so much more impactful. Almost like it's... it's I can't explain it. Like it, it feels more weighted like and it feels more impact. Like you have to charge your attacks and you have to just like use a like certain combinations. I don't know if it's like Dark Souls where you have to dodge and like have to actually watch your health and maybe get resources, you can upgrade armor. I don't know if it's like that, but if it is, I can't wait to play it. It looks, it, it sounds good. So damn satisfying. Even hundreds of years later. From the very beginning, finding the right combination of slicing, throwing, assistance from Atreus, and parrying with the retractable shield oh. makes battles a bloody ballet of time. Ooh. But a variety of unlockable special attacks and upgradable armor for both Kratos and Atreus. You can craft. You can craft. Okay, okay. Style and execute some flashy moves. Late and post-game scenarios also required me to switch things up thanks to a variety of enemies. The bigger enemies put up a great fight, but some of the best battles come from human-sized foes who also offer a worthy job. Most notably, there are a couple of stellar boss fights that do a fantastic job of showcasing Kratos' god-level strength. Ah. Woo! God, the God of War, god of war is back. back. The God of War is back. Kratos went off. Contains it. nature shepherds you through certain locations with its question, but the world unfolds through smart integration with the story. There are great optional areas you can entirely miss if you don't take Atreus' hints to explore. And both these and the locations that are key to the story make smart use of Norse figures and locations. Some areas are also reshaped throughout the story in ways that make repeat visits valuable and exciting, and eases the pain of some late game backtrack. Knowledge of lore is its own reward in God of War, Look here. and I loved searching out every bit of mythology I could find. Even after the story ended, I've sunk at least another 10 to 15 hours into exploring the world, and by all indications, I still have a bit to find. That's in part because of how gorgeous everything looks. So it's an open world game. Okay, awesome. It's an open world. You have crafting and different weapon and combat techniques. This is going to be, oh my goodness, this game is going to be amazing. And a great story. Oh my, I, I can't wait. From the environments to small details on Kratos and Atreus. Even during the 10 or so hours I played on a launch PlayStation 4, I marveled at the scenery. Then I played God of War on a PS4 Pro and was blown away by the true level of detail the world holds when bumped up to checkerboarded 4K. All of this beauty comes at a cost, however, and that means God of War runs at 30 frames per second or so, instead of the 60 frames that makes action games feel so much smoother. That said, the world largely ran well for me outside of the occasional frame rate dip. I expected great action from God of War, and it delivers that handily. But I didn't expect it to be a thrilling journey in which every aspect of it complements the others to form a masterpiece that is by far the most stirring and memorable game in the series. Its world is vibrant, thoughtfully constructed, and packed to the brim with secrets I'm still uncovering. 
centered around a tale that revolutionizes a one-note character into one of gaming's greats. That sense of discovery is rare, and one that should be experienced firsthand. Okay, you know the game is good when it gets a masterpiece. It got 10, bro. IGN barely gives 10s, bro. I'm telling you. So the game is good. The game is fire. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of me watching a review of God of War. Guys, stick around if you want to see me do my walkthrough of God of War and play through it. Thanks so much for watching and 